Well, hello again, Xenographers, and welcome to another episode. And in this video, I'll be showing you how I replaced the light seals on an Olympus OM-10 and brought an old SLR back to life. The OM-10 was the consumer level camera of the OM series, and it was intended for anybody who wanted a fully functional SLR, but didn't want to shell out for a professional level camera like the OM-1 or OM-2. It's an aperture priority camera, which I guess for most casual users is pretty good. I like aperture priority and I use it all the time. But it could be converted to a fully manual camera by adding the optional manual adapter. And that just clips on the front. And when you get one of those, you've then got a fully manual SLR. The OM-10 is a really capable machine and it's by no means the poor relation of the OM line. There is a certain amount of plastic used in its construction. As I understand it, some of the internal parts that were metal in the OM-1 and OM-2 are replaced by plastic in the OM-10. The top and bottom plates, I believe, are metal. So despite being in some ways a slightly lesser camera, it's still a very capable machine. They were cheaper than the OM-1 and OM-2 in their day, and they're still cheaper now. You can pick up a good one of these for between 40 to 70 pounds or thereabouts. If we compare it to the OM-2, we can see it's pretty much the same dimensions. It is slightly taller, but only by a few millimeters, and the width is exactly the same. Now, if you've watched other videos on this channel, you may know that I'm quite a big fan of the Zuiko lenses and this camera will take those lenses. Those lenses, in my view, are pretty much unparalleled. They have magnificent colour rendition. There's a massive range to choose from, and they all give really nice images. They're very small and light and compact, much more so than many Canon and Nikon lenses of the same era. So if you're looking to get into the OM system and you don't want to spend too much money, this is a really great place to start. If we look at the top plates, you can see that they're broadly similar. We've got film rewind, shutter release, exposure compensation dial and film speed selector combined on the right. There's a hot shoe right in the centre where you'd expect to find it. And on the left, we can see the film rewind, the catch to open the camera back and also the on off switch. This has an extra function on the OM10 because it also has a position for the self-timer, which on the OM-10 is electronic rather than mechanical. Looking inside, we can see that the OM-10 has the Leica-derived cloth shutter, a very reliable design that stood the test of time and contributes to the camera's lightness and compactness. Make no mistake about it, this little Olympus is a very, very nice, very capable little machine. It's really nicely made and finished. It's got aperture priority auto exposure and it's also got manual exposure if you add the manual adapter. These are not expensive. You can get one from around 10 to 15 pounds. The viewfinder is big and bright in the Olympus tradition. I've been using this camera quite a lot recently and I don't find it lacking in any way. I found it to be reliable well made and very simple to use. So if you want one of these, of course, you're going to have to buy one second hand and second hand buying brings risks. I bought this camera recently with a few lenses. The advert was very honest. It said that the shutter was jammed and indeed the shutter was jammed. When I tried to wind it, it wound on once, but the shutter wouldn't fire. And of course it wouldn't wind again after that point. However, if the batteries are flat, that's exactly what will happen. The camera will jam up, it won't wind, and the shutter won't fire. So had I looked out, was it just a case of needing new batteries? Well, when I opened the battery compartment, I could see that it was empty. So I popped in a couple of LR44s, put the cover back on, and tried again. So when I wound on again, the wind-on lever now moved, and when I fired the shutter, I found that the camera was now working. Result. 
on all old film cameras, because the body has to open to get the film in, there has to be a seal against light getting in. On the OM-10, those seals are made of foam rubber. They sit in two channels, one along the top, here, that runs right across the back of the camera, and one along the bottom here, that again runs right across the back of the camera. There are also seals for the sides of the door. These run vertically up and down, and you can see one of those here, and there's also one on the other side. Over time the foam degrades, so those needed to be replaced. To get the old foam out you need to dissolve the sticky backing, and to do that I use lighter fluid. Take a small artist paintbrush, dip it in the lighter fluid, and just brush a little bit along the light seal channel. That will dissolve the sticky stuff, and it's then a matter of getting a small screwdriver to dig out the old rubber from the channel. It's quite time consuming, and you may have to apply more lighter fluid, but in the end, it will all come out. It's a time consuming, awkward sort of a job, but it is pretty simple. Now, because I'm practiced at this and I've done a few of these, I can do this quite quickly, and you'll find the more you practice, the quicker you can go. The light seal foam is a very fiddly job, it's not an entirely pleasant job, and it can prompt the use of some shall we call them engineering terms, composed of four letters. But although it's fiddly, it is simple. And it really is entirely doable, if you put aside a little time. I reckon it took about a couple of hours to do this one. You can get light seal kits for pretty much any old SLR ready cut. What I usually do is buy some light seal material in a sheet and cut it myself. I usually make the cut by eye an estimation, and I find that works well enough. All you need is a pair of scissors and a steady hand. Aim to cut about one to two millimetres wide. There's a larger piece needed for the hinge side of the door. To find the size of that, I press the light seal foam against the area that I want to fit it to, and you'll find that you get an imprint to act as a guide. So we cut that piece out, and I usually cut slightly wider than I need to. Better to cut too much than too little. Apply it to the camera again. If it's a little bit too big, just trim off the bit you don't need. Now, I will warn you beforehand, this is a very fiddly, somewhat irksome job. Once you've got the first part in, the trick is to keep the foam a little taut, which stretches it and makes it thinner, so it goes into the channel a bit more easily. On the top rail, quite near to the hinge, there's a little catch which has to remain mobile. So the top piece of light seal foam can't go in in one piece. Make sure the catch is free to move, and put the rest of the seal in as a continuous piece right across the body of the camera. I always use a small screwdriver to press the foam in as I go, making sure it's sticking to the bottom of the channel. It can be a little difficult getting it in around this raised part, but again, persevere and you'll succeed. When you get to the end of the horizontal run of foam, get a sharp knife like this Stanley knife and just nick off the end. And then just make sure it's all seated properly by running your screwdriver along with a little pressure and pushing down. Next, peel off the backing strip for the side seal and place it carefully on the camera next to the hinge. Give it a good press down to make sure it's adhering properly. A thin piece goes on the far edge of the door opposite to the hinge. So once you've got the old one off, place the new piece carefully in position and push it down. Trim off the end with the trusty Stanley and we're done. I'm very pleased with this camera. I took a chance on it. I didn't know whether it was going to work or not. 
but I do know that many have been fooled into thinking they don't have a working camera just because the batteries have died. So the next step then is to put some film in the camera and see how it works. I'm going to use some of this film. This is Adox 100 black and white film and apparently it has a 30% higher silver content than most other black and white films and that gives it a really strong tonal range and a really vibrant rich look. So I loaded up the camera and these are the images I got. So that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been of some use. Please do like and subscribe and I'll see you next time for more Xenography. Thanks for watching.